Hello, James Keating here from Perth in Western Australia. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can take your standard reticule binoculars and the MMO range finding app on your favourite device and turn it into a mitigation decision tool in your back pocket. Marine mammal observers, or MMOs, mitigate for the potential impact of sound exposure on marine fauna during seismic surveys, unexploded ordnance clearance, wind farm work or civil engineering projects. A fundamental function of the observer is to calculate the distance of an animal to the source of noise irrespective of their own position and recommend actions based on specified mitigation zones around the source of the sound. Depending on the survey type and in water configuration, MMOs can be located anything from hundreds of metres from the centre of source. If an MMO is based on the shore or based on a chase boat, they could be kilometres away from the centre of source. This creates time-consuming complications when estimating where the animal is in relation to these mitigation zones. This app calculates the distance from the animal, which we refer to as the target, to the origin of the sound, which we refer to as the source, using a trigonometric fo cosine function. The user simply enters the distance and bearing to the target and source from their observation position, and the app calculates the rest. OK, let's get straight into it. So if this is the first install of the app, you want to go into the iPhone settings app and take a look at some of the defaults. The first thing we want to look at is if we're going to be using GPS, we need to switch it on in location settings. Scroll down to privacy, location services, and find rangefinder. Click it and select one of the options. This is your own personal preference. If you find that rangefinder isn't listed in this list when you first look at it, Simply open up the rangefinder app itself, let it load up and close it again and it should appear next time you load. Go back out to the main settings menu and scroll down and here we'll find the actual defaults for our app. From top to bottom we can see we can set true north or magnetic north. And the reason this is in is if you're concerned about any interference with your magnetic compass in the app. Bear in mind that using true north requires GPS which requires extra battery and a good clear satellite signal. Vessel speed can read in knots or kilometers per hour. Coordinate format can read in the following formats. Pretty much industry standard. And binocular mills per reticule. Now this is something you're, you're going to want to check the manufacturer's specifications for your own binoculars. For my 7x50s there's 5 mils per small reticule but I prefer to count the larger reticules for my measurements which is a little bit more intuitive so I set it to 10. Now in the app you can select three default observation positions and their relevant heights above sea level. Bear in mind this is eye height. These are fully customizable you can change it to whatever name you want. Try and keep the names short and obvious. You don't want to put in port side bridge wing aft of the compass repeater because it's simply just going to take up your entire screen on the app. So let's put it aft deck. And you can adjust the heights in meters 25. When you're happy with your settings, go back out. Now we can open the app, let it load up, and we'll see some examples. You'll see there's two configurations available, basic and advanced. We'll have a look at basic first. In this format, there's no reticule converter, there's no GPS. It does have the compass. So as you move the orientation of your device, you can see the compass matches the device. So for the first example, we're just going to use relative bearings. We're not going to use the compass at all. So we've seen an animal. It's off to the left or the port side beam of our vessel. So we're going to say it's 270 degrees. Now relative bearings in this case is where zero is the bow. We're going to say that the source is directly behind us, being towed about 350 meters back from our position, not from the back of the vessel, from our observation position. The distance to the animal, let's say 1200, and hit done. Press solve and we'll see that the answer is given at the top of the app. This is the distance of the animal to the source. We'll do another example. Hit the clear button on the left and the clear button on the right. And we'll see that the app actually saves the distance to source. That's because this is usually a constant and it'll be a pain to have to delete it and re-enter the exact same number. So in this example, we're going to actually use the orientation of the app 
to fix the bearing to first the animal. So orientate your device so the red triangle is pointing towards the animal and hit fix for target. Now you can manually enter the bearing to source if you know it or you can turn the device all the way around and point it. So in this case we're going to manually enter 180 again. Same distances and hit solve and there's your answer. So that's the basic configuration of the app. It's pretty straightforward. Hit the, the back arrow on the bottom right to get back out to your configuration screen. Now let's take a look at the advanced configuration. We can see now that we've got quite a little bit extra going on at the bottom of the screen. We can see our three default observation positions. We can select between them on the fly and the name that we entered is displayed as well as the eye height above sea level. And we'll leave it at half deck. Bottom left is our GPS position in the format that we selected. Just bear in mind this is going to use extra battery power and it's also going to need pretty good satellite connectivity. It should only really be used for reference. If you see an animal you need to get GPS reference from probably from your vessel. We display the speed overground and the course overground. At the moment they're displaying minus one because I'm not actually moving anywhere. In the bottom right we've got our back arrow again but we've also got a screenshot button and this allows us just to save some of the data we've entered for um, later data entry or else just for our own reference. So we'll just run into another example. So the target, we're going to orientate the device towards where the target was and hit fix. The source, again instead of using the compass I'm going to just use what's in my head, 180 degrees. Now off my binoculars I've judged that the animal is about 1.2 reticules below the horizon. So I simply enter 1.2 into the distance text field and I click the reticule button to convert the distance at that given eye height. Pretty easy. For the, so for the source distance, usually again we know it. We can also use the reticule, for example, if we're doing any shore-based surveying and the source is actually moving relative to our position, we can use that function as well. Click Solve and we get our answer. Clear everything again and we can see that the distance to source is saved. If you do want to delete that distance to source, you're going to need to go and open the keyboard and do it manually. Another quick example, so from the Monkey Island, fix 270, let's say this time it's at 3.4 reticules and the source is 6 reticules. Fix the reticules for the animal and the reticules for the source, click solve and there's your answer.